Welcome back, friends, to today's episode and the last week that we'll be spending time together in the book of Romans. Hopefully, it's not the last week we'll spend time together, uh, but uh, this book of Romans has been such a wonderful journey for me. I have just so enjoyed studying and relaying to you the things that the Lord has shown me and excited that uh, we're here in chapter 16. Chapter 16 doesn't get a whole lot of attention because if we're not careful, we'll look at it like, well, it's just a bunch of names, half of which I cannot pronounce, so we can just move through it more quickly. And that's not to say that we're going to spend a Bible study on every name. There's like 24 names, uh, but it is important. It's the Word of God. And it's important that we understand why. Why did the Apostle Paul greet all of these people? What can we learn about the fact that he did? Uh, what, what can we learn uh, from a specific few of them? Uh, all of that we'll talk about in the next uh, couple episodes. So by the end of the week, we will have completed the book of Romans. We'll jump into a brand new book uh, next week, an Old Testament book. I won't announce it yet, but I know where I'm going and looking forward to that. So Romans chapter 16 and verse number one, where the Bible says, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant. Interesting, the word servant here is the word for deacon, uh, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centria, or they would pronounce it Kentria. So what are we to learn from the beginning of chapter 16? Well, first of all, we learn that Phoebe is the one that's carrying this letter from Corinth, where the Apostle Paul is writing, to Rome. So if you were to picture a Bible map, and I would even encourage you to look it up because this is important to see. The Co Corinth is located right near an isthmus, which is a narrow strip of land that divides two larger bodies of water. And the isthmus of Corinth that attaches the, the mainland of Greece to the Peloponnesian Peninsula has two bodies of water, one on the kind of the south, let's say, east side, which is the Saronic Gulf. That's where Kentria is, right on the Saronic Gulf, right near Corinth. And then on the other side is the Gulf of Corinth. What's interesting is if you look at a Bible map, it saved shipping industry people all kinds of money to sail along into the Saronic Gulf and then to transport their goods over land, just a couple miles really, and then back into the water on the other side, it saved them all kinds of time and money going all the way around the Peloponnesian Peninsula, which took longer and was much more dangerous because of the winds and the seas and all of that. So just suffice it to, to say that Kentria and Corinth were popular cities and important cities in part because of the geographic significance of, of, of their placement. So Phoebe is a member of the Church of Kentria. She's a servant there. The word deacon here doesn't necessarily refer to an office, uh, but more to just a servant. Throughout the book of Romans, uh, Paul is referred to servants. And we, we ought all be, in that sense, a deacon in our church, in the sense that we are model servants of God. And Phoebe, apparently, is a businesswoman. Apparently, she has the time and the energy and the resources to be able to make a trip like this. And the Apostle Paul is saying to the church at Rome, now I want to write this letter of recommendation and tell you I commend her to you. And my commendation of Phoebe is the fact that she is a servant in her local church. That's what I can say. That's a reason why you can trust her. That's a reason why you ought to readily and gratefully receive her because she is a servant in her local church. I wonder, could that letter be written about you? Could that resume, not resume, but reference letter be written about me? That I am a servant 
in my local church, willing to transport the Word of God to others. Isn't that what we all are supposed to do? Aren't we all bearers of God's Word? In in that sense, we're supposed to get the Word of God from people that have not heard it to people that need to hear it. Uh, And that's what Phoebe is doing. And I I love how the the chapter begins. It begins by Paul saying, here is a person that you might not know. I'm going to introduce her to you. Uh, She has a great Christian testimony, and she's engaged in great and important Christian work. And that's a good template for the rest of the chapter. Because as I said, we're going to look at 24 different people in Romans 16, and yet all of them have that same basic testimony. They are serving God, they are relatively unknown, and Paul is bringing their testimony to light. So, Phoebe. Now, let's look at verse number two, where it says, that ye receive her in the Lord. So there's the hospitality. And to receive means not just to shake her hand and give her a kiss of greeting, but to receive means take care of her. Uh, Exercise hospitality. Receive her in an official capacity. Make sure that her needs are met. In fact, watch what it goes on to say. That you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints. That, That would be part and parcel to what all believers should do. All believers, all churches should have a spirit of hospitality so that when people come to our church who are servants of God, who are doing God's work, there ought to be a predisposition on the part of our churches to love them, to greet them, to care for them, in that sense, to bring them forward on their journey. Does your church have that spirit? If not, could you help to fertilize that spirit in your church? That as servants of the Lord come your way, that they would sense a genuine spiritual reception. That, that, that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And how can we meet your needs? And what can we do to help you? Do you have a place to say, stay? Uh, can I get you something to eat? You know, or do you have some needs while you're here? That ought to be our spirit toward Christian workers that are coming through or coming to our ministry. There ought to be this hospitable culture that characterizes our ministries so that that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, because this is what ought to adorn all local churches. Then it says, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. So apparently the Apostle Paul had given Phoebe some other responsibilities uh, to accomplish while she was there. And listen, uh, help her whatever she needs. If she needs some supplies, if she needs some physical help uh, in the ministry that she has, hey, she's a good lady. She serves God. She's operating as my emissary. Help her. You know, help her. Come alongside of her. And here are two good reasons why Phoebe ought to receive help from you. Look look at them. Verse number two. Number one, for she hath been a securer. That's just an old English word that means a helper. She's been a helper of many and of myself also. So receive her in the Lord. Why? Because she is the kind of person that helps others. And she has helped me. She's come alongside of me. She's been a blessing to our local church. Now, she's going to be in a position where she needs help, where she has to rely upon you. And many times, people that are servants, maybe you're this way, people that are servants, sometimes they have a hard time allowing people to serve them. The Apostle Paul said, hey, she is a servant. She would be the first person to work in the kitchen or to take that shift in the in the nursery or to show up on that work day. She's the first person to do that. Now she's going to need your help. So would you help her knowing that she's the kind of person that does this with her life wherever she goes to? Sometimes we are the ones serving. Sometimes we are the ones being served. But in every situation, we ought to be reflecting the nature and character of Christ. Now, let's go to one last thought today, and that's found in verses 3 and 4. 
So real quickly, uh, Paul says, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. So a chief helper of the Apostle Paul, Phoebe, delivering the letter. But some other key helpers, Priscilla and Aquila. And watch what he says about this couple. This is amazing. Verse number four, who have for my life laid down their own necks. Man, they would have, we would say today, they would take a bullet for me. Man, they were willing to sacrifice everything to help me. Unto whom, he says in verse four, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. So here's Priscilla and Aquila. And if you want a rich Bible study, study Priscilla and Aquila. They're mentioned, I think, five times in the Bible. Every time they're mentioned, they're mentioned with each other. They're a couple that truly serves God. Priscilla and Aquila, uh, I think it's six times, because I think three times it's Aquila and Priscilla, and then the other times it's Priscilla and Aquila. So it's, it's the opposite. I think I might have said the same thing twice, but you know what I mean. So here's Priscilla and Aquila. The Bible says they started out in Pontus. They ended up in Rome. Claudius expelled all the Jews from Rome. They met Paul in Corinth. Paul discipled them there for eight months, 18 months. They went to Ephesus. There they discipled Apollos, started a church in their house. From there, they went to Rome because Paul is writing from Corinth later on in the third missionary journey and writing to them in Rome, greet them. And they're going to end up back in Ephesus because Paul greets them again in 2 Timothy, where he's writing from Rome back to Timothy in Ephesus. What's the point? The point is this couple, uh, they're all about the gospel wherever they go. They're starting churches. They're discipling believers. Their whole life as a couple is serving God. And Paul says, and I owe my life to them. Every church of the Gentiles. Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles, ought to write them a thank you letter. Why? Because were it not for them, there would be no me. Were it not for their ministry, I would not have a ministry. And I wonder how many people in local churches, the pastor might get the credit. Uh, He might be the famous one. Uh, He might be the upfront one. But how many people does God use in strategic and vital ways in our churches like Priscilla and Aquila that make the difference that only the judgment seat of Christ will adequately reveal. Maybe that's you today. I hope it is. Phoebe, Priscilla, Aquila. These are great servants of God that you and I will meet one day. Let's stop there in the middle of verse number five. We'll come back and introduce some other names next episode. Hope you'll join us for that. God bless you, my friends.